Now, my kia native affairs, it's every parent's worst nightmare to discover your child is suffering from a rare genetic disorder which leaves them physically and mentally disabled. A disorder so incredibly rare, even the doctors don't know what it is. For parents Jane and Tuhuki Paul, the nightmare would get worse. Not one, but two of their daughters were born with this rare disease. Tonight they share their remarkable story with Renee Kahukura Yosefa. It's an insight into the mysterious world of Māori genetics, but mostly it's a story of two parents' unwavering, unconditional love. She's one of two sisters, born within a year of each other. She's severely disabled. Her name is Afi. This is her sister Kahia, a normal 12-year-old. Both were born with the same genetic disorder. How could the outcome for each girl be so different? It's a question their whānau has been asking for 12 years. Why is Afi in this condition? Their mother is Jane Paul. Why is Kahia not in the same condition? This is a story about a family struggle to come to terms with having a severely disabled daughter and wondering if things could have been different for her. It's also a journey into the little known world of Māori genetics, the DNA, the blueprint of what makes us who we are. When Afi was born in April 2001, everything was normal. At five weeks, drowsy and not feeding properly, she was admitted to Middlemore Hospital. Blood tests revealed an alarming abnormality. The blood came out was like a really bright pink. They sort of got really worried about it and then baby sort of got into a shock state or something was going on with her. They were sending the bloods down to the lab in between this and saying, oh, it's a joke, kept sending it back and back and forth with the blood while baby was deteriorating. Rushed her into recess. I was I like slammed on, pushed the bait and running after them, asking what's going on. Their little girl was rushed from Miramore to Starship Hospital. Afi's life hanging in the balance. Her parents frightened and bewildered. Can you tell us what's going on? You're not doing anything unless you're telling us what's going on, you know, because they're telling him yeah, they've at the time we, I entered and I got in there, they had already had heaps of lines in there. Yeah. Didn't even know she was just like in a coma looking, you know. It wasn't just Uffy's parents who were in the dark. Her doctors and nurses were just as shocked by what they were seeing. It had never occurred in the world before this disease, so there's no way anyone could know it was going to happen. And by the t when she presented, she had already unfortunately um, had, the, had the, the brain disease. Dr Cullen Wilson is the only paediatrician in the world who specialises in Māori and Pacific genetic diseases. Afi would prove to be one of his most puzzling cases. I first heard about Afi uh, in the middle of the night, actually. I was, I was asleep and I got a call from the hospital. It would have been about 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, she'd been admitted into intensive care and she was in a coma, essentially. They did a blood sample and the blood looked very, very abnormal. And if you looked at a blood sample in a test tube, instead of just looking like normal blood, it looked like raspberry ripple ice cream. In other words, it was, it was mainly white with just little streaks of red, which was the normal blood. So about 60% of her blood volume was fat. And that meant that Uffie's blood wasn't carrying enough vital red blood cells. This would have devastating consequences for this little girl. So because the, the blood vessels had been so clogged up, she was getting a lack of oxygen to her brain, and that's what eventually led to her brain disease. And unfortunately, once brain tissue dies, it, it doesn't recover. 
They said that, oh, she had died a few times. Yeah, somewhere. And then her brain, well, she was out of oxygen, oxygen way too long, which ended up giving her mate lots of, like, blindness and fully developmental delay and losing... She couldn't even eat suck anymore and we had to reteach her how to suck and just a whole heap of stuff come with it, you know. Samples of Offie's DNA were sent to one of the world's leading medical researchers in Italy. They discovered Offie's blood was missing a critical enzyme that breaks down fat. No one knew the condition even existed. Offie was a medical first. They found this gene called apolipoprotein C2. And there they found a mistake in the gene. In fact, two mistakes. We have, we have two copies of every gene. One, one copy we get from our mum and one copy we get from our dad. So they found two mistakes, and the mistakes happened to be the same mistake. So um, they had obviously inherited the same faulty gene from mum and from dad. And so the likelihood when you get a situation like that with a very rare disease with the same faulty gene is that there's a common relative further back in the ancestry. Jane Paul and her husband Tehuki are second cousins, and there's a chance that might have been responsible for the genetic defect inherited by Afi and Kahia. Could it be because we're related, you know, our cousin, our, like, his mum and my dad, so, first cousin, could it be genes? It's important that Māori as a people recognise the genetic diseases that can occur in Māori. We see Māori and, and Pacific genetic diseases that aren't described in the medical textbooks and, and up until now no one's known about. With no one able to tell them how long Afi might survive, the Fano decided to return with their girl to their Tūranga Waiwai in the Hokianga. The medical opinion was there was nothing more that could be done. Jane and Tuhuki were on their own. What do I do as a mother to watch your baby die? You know, virtually is what I found. I felt I couldn't look after her because I, I don't want to take her home and she dies. And then we went up north, eh? And then yeah, and then five Axel years into it. To the system, they said because she's under two years old, there's no funding, and, you know, because she was still on their thing, oh, she could die any time, so they couldn't really help us. So we pretty much just left it like that, okay, we can't rely on you, we'll do this we ourselves. We have to do it ourselves and figure it out. In the isolation of the Hokianga, away from specialist health services, with no one to rely on but themselves. They were left to care for their severely disabled daughter. What kept her here, actually, it was the whanau, the love. The love. aunties and cousins. You know, it wasn't us. medical to anything. It was us, what we gave her love and support. Ten months after Afi's diagnosis, her sister Kahia was born. I was holding my baby and Kahia hey, and, like, man. thing, and then... I noticed her eyelids were pink. Starting to go this bright pink again. And, and I went, like, Mum, <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's like Alfie. She's got and the then... same thing. And we're like, what? Look at her eyelids. Kahia might look healthy now, but that's only because her parents took her to hospital when she was just four weeks old and demanded a blood test. When those nurses pulled the blood out, all I saw was the tube all pink. pink. The parents luckily recognised that very, very early on, they could see in the little blood vessels of Kahia's eyes that instead of them looking red, they looked like a, it was a pale sort of pink sort of colour. They brought her into Starship. But this time they knew how to avoid the permanent damage Afi suffered and get enough oxygen to Kahia's brain. No one could have imagined how simple the solution would be. And we started Kahia on this very special baby formula which has a sort of fat, but it's a fat that can bypass the genetic defect that Afi's got. And so we could give her all her nutrients and she could grow normally, and she's done, she's done well. So it was as simple as a rook powder? As, as, it was as simple as a different a baby formula. So instead of having breast milk or normal baby formula, we gave her a formula called Monogen. 
<laughs> the formula monogen saved Kahia's life because it allowed her to absorb nutrients in the normal manner. It's hard to hear that something so simple could have saved her sistafi. So they would have been together at the same schools, like both at intermediate now. And they would have both went to college together and whatever else they would have done together, you know. Yeah. In many ways, it was because of Afi that Kahi has done so well. She was the, the person that enabled us to work out what was going on. And by the time Kahia came along, we knew exactly what to do if we had a second case and we were able to treat her before the brain disease started. Today, the poor Fano are having a family portrait and as always, Afi is centre frame. She'll tell, let you know if she's not happy. <laughs> she's, um, she loves her kai, she loves eating. She loves being around family, she loves noise, she loves whānau, you know, she loves being in amongst everything. She'll let you know okay. hey, if she okay. needs a drink or a nappy like. change. And she loves cuddles. Whatever disappointments and difficulties they've faced, the poor whānau have overcome them with little help. They're proof that love and patience is the best medicine of all. Love it just the same, Amy. <laughs> Definitely. But we're just thankful with every day we have her there, you know. That she's still breathing air, she's still with us. That's what we are really thankful for. Renee Kahukura Yosefa with that report. And we know what you're thinking, and yes, they're all Jane and Tuhuki's children. In fact, they're proud parents to 10 beautiful tamariki. Now, as you've heard, Afi's whānau have never received much in the way of help, and Afi has never been provided with any physiotherapy. One of her great pleasures in life is to stretch out and enjoy a warm bath, but as she grows, that becomes more difficult. The whānau would like to buy a spa pool to accommodate Afi and her needs, so if you think you can help them fundraise, you can give a koha towards Afi's spa at givealittle.co.nz forward slash cause forward slash Afi Paul. The link is up on our Native Affairs Facebook page, so let's make that happen.